So first of all, remember that I am speaking to you through, through the eyes of my teachers. I'm talking to you and I'm telling you information that comes from the people of Java, Bali, Indonesia, or as it was called before, it was occupied by external forces, New Santara. <clears throat> so the people of New Santara, which is the island archipelago that makes up Indonesia, um, have many different tribal entities that are there. Um, my sila arts, for those people that are my students that practice the Kung Tao and the sila arts, they emanate both from West Java, which are the Sundanese, which is the Straits of Sunda, and a big island called Sunda Land or Sunda, um, and have it one area of West Java, the Jakarta area, the cities that you might know. A massive migration of those people there. Uh, and my physical and some of my spiritual training is from that tribal entity. There are many different tribes that make up those islands that make up Indonesia. Um, the West Java area, once again, Jakarta, Bandung, the areas that your Shaolin arts, which you learned from Master Lee, came from Bandung, West Java. But they're not the only people that inherit the Indonesia's island of Java. You have the Maduris, who are on the eastern end. Their culture is different. And you have in central Java, where the bulk of my spiritual information is coming from. And my entry into the priesthood is from that avenue, in, in that avenue. Today we're going to learn mostly about Javanese spiritual healing. Now, Javanese spiritual healing is really unique, but the Javanese information has been relatively secret. Now, I've trained in these Southeast Asian fighting arts, so those of you that are my students, you have to determine what my level of proficiency is as a fighter. Okay? Those of you that know me, those of you that don't know me, you know, you'll have to wait and get to know me a little better. But for those of you that know me, um, I see you're still with me, so I believe that you respect my ability when it comes to combat. So I'm telling you as your teacher that these arts that I've learned from the Javanese are way higher skill sets than anything you've ever seen me do that is martial. And when I asked for this information 30 years, 25 years ago, it was not available to me. And when they finally began to teach me the information, and I asked them, why did we wait so long? And their answer was really direct. It was really direct. And they said to me, because you had to be able to protect it with your life. So the method of acquisition for these things is tenfold. I recommend for all my students to slide. Just forget about all the other crap. Get out there and move your body. And a lot of the answers will come to you because you're doing them. Is that right? Yeah. So you need my hand on you to guide you, which is what I'm coming back to do. But I've always had.
and then it's pulled over here. So my goal, I asked Michael Reed, could I establish a goal today for you guys? And my goal was to erase all negativity today. Now I'm not saying I can do this for you for the whole period of our existence or whatever, but today I have taken it on myself with my teacher's blessings to eradicate all negativity in this room. Now I'm gonna work individually with everybody, but my goal is to remove negativity. So I don't want to get into technical variances and vernaculars that are descriptive of one type or one other type of negativity. Let's just say we all know what negativity is. Is that right? And for you people who do healing arts and touch other people, you have to know how to dissipate energy, the negative energy that you pull off of people's body. If you are just touching people, in the old days, in Indonesia, you just didn't come up and touch you. Because they were afraid of people taking their vital energy from them. So, if you don't know anything about that, then it could seem storytelling. But for you out there, my students who trust me and know me, I'm telling you that is the way that it is. So, Sajin, S-A-J-I-I-N. Sajin is the name of the healing arts that I practice from Central Java. I was introduced to these arts by Guru Daniel Prasetya from Haiti Omba, one of the founders of Laputama. Uh, when I met Guru Daniel through my teacher, Bapak Kulam de Tuars, uh, Daniel really opened up my life for me. He says, ah, we're younger, let us take care of the fighting. You spend your time and go ahead and do what you always wanted to do, which is deal with the healing side of us. And my journey began. From there I met, and I was the last disciple of Guru Tuhaji, who was a high priest, and he passed away. But before he passed away, I was sent to my teacher then, his brother, Masigit, uh, Jayati, another person, one of the founders of, uh, of Lakutama, and of course, another person that I'm not permitted to mention. So, my quest in the beginning was what is Tanaga Dalam? Tanaga Dalam literally means inner power. Dalam, inside. And you got a lot of practitioners here who do the internal Chinese arts, and they're great. There's nothing wrong with them. Um, I don't know those arts. My only introduction to internal, even though I'm a Kung Tao practitioner, my teacher took his hand off me with internal and said, Nothing could be any better than what you're doing already. I already do those arts, I just don't do the Chinese variant. So when you're beginning to generate energy through your Tai Chi or your Shimi or your Bakwa or whatever you're practicing, much of this information leads you to similar conclusions, but not the same. Uh, when I asked my first teacher about internal stuff, he says, why do you want to know, Guru? And I said, I just want to know. Everybody else wants fighting techniques. Everybody else wants the killing stuff. For me, I want to learn about healing. I want to learn about internal power. He says, why do you want to know? And I told him, I heard that. I don't know, it's a part of me. That's why I'm here. I want to know because I'm a healer, I'm a doctor, and I want to get further with my craft. I want to see how you mend bones without surgical intervention. I want to see all these things. And he says, to get something good, Bahati, I think you must give something. And what he meant at that point is, I have to give my time. I have to dedicate myself to be out there doing my internal exercises like anybody in here who's a true internal You know it doesn't jump all in one day. It's a cumulative effect. I had seen true internal energy from my Kuntao master. Master Baba Fulham de Quars was the head of my Kuntao family. And I'd seen 
true energetics from him. Therein my fighting style. So you see when I hit you, it comes from the knowledge of Kung Tao. See? From the knowledge of Kung Tao. But the energetics that I generated from actually come from my Indonesian background, my Indonesian training, which is so different from the Chinese as you'll see for yourself. And today I'm going to show you what that generates. I'm going to teach you how to tell when you have it. I'm going to work with you immediately with uh, the, the system that I want you to learn when we sit down again and take notes and have our question and answer period. I'm going to go on with exercises on healing. Today my goal uh, is to teach you uh, or to expose you to. Okay? Once again, I believe this does not mean you have to. But I'm not going to change it and make it soft for you to accept. Either you have an open mind, and I encourage you to have an open mind, or not. But I can't change it and make it palatable for you. This is or that it would be the hot behind you shop here. But it's not. It's old Japanese that pre predates archipelago Sanskrit, predates Indianized Sanskrit. It's one of the oldest written, recorded languages on this planet today. That is the information I'm giving you. 